Oh yeah, so I just wanted, first thing I wanted to say was that I thought this was, I was talking with Fred about this before, and I thought this was a great idea. Because um, I know like a lot of times like you have a problem with the data, so you're looking at it and you have, you can sort of, you're visualizing the data and there's something you want to do with it. You know, there's like you want to say, is this shape the same thing as this shape? Or something like that. And it's really kind of the tool that you're lacking. And so even, you know, just knowing the name of the tool, so then you can go in and look it up on Wikipedia or whatever, whatever you're going to get the details of it. But I thought it was a great idea just to get people familiar with the tools that are out there. So that aside, <laughs> Nathan and I are going to talk about linear regression, optimization, classification, and decoding. And so I'm going to start talking about linear regression, which I think is probably the sort of the, the simplest we thought this is a good place to start because there's there's just a lot of backgrounds here, and so I wanted to do something that's kind of really non-technical, um, but that leads into some really cool territory with decoding. So that's I'm going to do the really non-technical part, and then Nathan is going to get probably too technical. Um, but so really, linear regression is kind of like the classical analysis technique, um, and I just looked this up, and it's it's over. It's 200 years old. It just had its 200th birthday a few years ago, um, and it was it was it was invented by Gauss and Legendre um, to find the parameters of orbits. So you have a bunch of noisy measurements, sort of repeated noisy measurements of planets. And how do you find the parameters in these orbits? Um, and so, real, but really, the question it answers is. Can I fit a line or a plane or a hyperplane or some kind of surface for more dimensions to my data? So for this, I'm just going to assume I have this fake data set that I made that is um, a bunch of two-dimensional data points firing rate over time. And so I can see that there's, to there's some relationship there. And the question that I want to answer is, um, you know, I want to quantify that relationship. So linear regression is a good place to start to try and quantify the relationship that I can see. And so I go into MATLAB and I pull out my regress function and I calculate B. So oops, calculate B and I put in my firing rate and my times and my column of ones. And I plot the result. And I get this nice line that's running through the center of my data. And so if you see really what I did, you know, is I've just found the parameters for a line. So I found the intercept and the slope. And that's, you know, from grade 10 math, that's the equation for a line. So that's what I'm plotting. And so really this is what regression does is find a line through the data. And so that was simple linear regression that I just showed. And this is kind of a misnomer that I always get confused about is I think that linear regression means that it, it's linear with respect to the dependent variable, which really, which, which is not true. So I can use linear regression to fit a parabola to my data. Uh, that should be a T squared, but we transfer it to a PC. Um, or I can fit a log function if I wanted to for whatever reason or some combination of them. Uh, but really, you can see what, what's linear is it's a linear model. It's a linear combination of the parameters, so the B parameters. Um, oh, yeah, OK. So this is so, so continuing with the non-technical part. This is one of my favorite examples. So I just thought I'd throw this in here. It's Anscombe's Quartet. And I guess it was made by Anscombe, a guy who really wanted to stress the point that these kind of statistical techniques can totally, can be really bad sometimes. So we came up with four data sets, um, or at least really bad, you know, so you, if you don't look at the data, so if you don't visualize the data, and you just come away with these statistics, you can think you're understanding it when really, really you're totally mischaracterizing the data. So we came up with these four data sets. Um, that's the quartet. And each of them, they have the same simple statistical uh, values. So they all have the same mean and y, variance in y, variance in x. They all have the same 
regression line through them. So if I didn't visualize the data, um, I would come away thinking that these are all similar data sets. But of course, you know, this one you can see on the bottom right is totally mischaracterized. Um, you know, it to it's just to it, the linear regression is totally inappropriate for that. Um, so this is just, I just like this example, so, and I needed 45 minutes, so I thought I'd throw this in. Um, oh yeah, okay, and so I, I, I get confused between correlation and regression sometimes. So making this, I thought I'd put in a few slides about how they're different. Uh, so correlation is the strength of the simple linear regression. Um, and so it's the simple linear regression, it just really measures the strength of the relationship. Whereas regression measures the form of the relationship. And regression is also used to predict. So this is something, this is what Nathan is gonna get into with the decoding, is the prediction from data. Um, but you know, so you can see, I can take that line that I calculated in the third slide and I can extend it to, you know, realms of the variables where I have no data and I can predict if I was gonna make a measurement, what would, what would happen there? And so of course you can't get prediction just from a correlation coefficient. Um, oh yeah, and so the last thing, so the, this is sort of the, again, uh, the non-technical part and just sort of this is, I like this understanding of R squared, so I'm gonna throw this in here. So this is so this is my original fake data set, and I have some variance in it, uh, but I also have that fit that I calculated. So if I just look at the the the, the deviance from the fit, so how far away my data points are from the fit, and I subtract that, I have a, a new variance, and so we can see that going between the variance gets smaller. And so really what the R squared is saying is this, this ratio between the two. So we went from something that was about a variance of three to about, about a variance of one. So we have about a 30, 32% of the variance left. And so that means we took away 68%. We have an R squared of 0.68. So that means we removed 68%. That's exactly what the R squared is saying is it's that ratio. Um, and this is, if I was gonna do my core coef, which so I use, you know, I, which is something I use continuously, this is uh, for the simple linear regression like this, the, the square of the correlation coefficient is this R squared. So that's what I did, I calculated that R and squared it, and you get the same value. Okay, so that's, so linear regression fits a line to the data, that's cool. Um, but how does it do it? So yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the this is the optimization. So the the way that you this is how you you're you're getting the 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 parameters of that line that you're putting through the data is really is a question of optimization. So least squares is the the one of the the original ways to do this and relating methods, and really optimization is maximizing or minimizing a value with math or um, some numerical technique. So in this case, it's defining a loss function and minimizing that loss function in some way. So the loss function here is the difference between my data, so my firing, those fake firing rates, and the fit between them. So this is, I'm just gonna zoom in on that little box there. Um, so this is, it's the sum of all those little dotted lines. So the vertical differences between my data and my fit, that's what I'm trying to minimize. So the sum of those. And so in this case, so the good fit that I got, this one came out of MATLAB, get a sum of residuals of about 150. I can do a much worse line that I just sort of came up with and I get higher residuals, so a uh, higher value of the loss function. So it went from about 150 to 600. Um, so this is really the, 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 the calculating that line comes down to finding the minimum value for that function. And so you can think about that function as existing in this two-dimensional space, this parameter space. 
um, that are my two parameters of the line. So the slope and the intercept. And that really good line, the best one that MATLAB could come up with, and the best one is a point in this two-dimensional space. And so the value of the loss function there is about 150. So that's that good line. Then the value of this bad fit through the data is it's a different point in this space, and the value is higher. So that's that bad fit. Um, but so then if I wanted to extend that to this whole space, I can really think about this loss function as forming a topology in this space. Um, and so forming a landscape. And so of course what I wanted to do is minimize the loss function. So this getting to the best fit through the data comes down to finding the bottom of this landscape. And so we can see that there's the, the bad line through it, sort of a lighter blue. And there's the, the good line through the data, which is as close to the bottom as there is. And so the loss function defines the topology. So we can do a different loss function. Um, so go from the absolute value of the residuals to the square. Um, but really the problem is the same of trying to find the bottom of this landscape. So we can think about situations where you have really complicated landscapes. Um, and where finding the bottom of it is, is not, it's not a trivial question. So there, there are ways to, to estimate these parameters. So really, the parameters are a location in that landscape. Um, and the way to, to, get, uh, to get those parameter values, there's, uh, you know, there's dozens and dozens of methods. But there's really, I just wanted to talk about two. There's the analytic and then the, the numerical way of doing it. So the analytic way is the, the if you, you, you can just define, so this is like grade 12 math, where you define a function and you set its um, derivative to zero to try and find a maximum or minima. So that's exactly what's doing here. This is the same loss function that I talked about before. It's just the difference between the firing rate and my fit. So I can put that in matrix form. And those are my little, those are supposed to be B hats. And so I can take the derivative of that with respect to B, set it to zero. Um, OK. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, right. So take the derivative, set it to zero. We can see when we solve, then we end up solving for B hat. We get this expression down here. So this is the analytic expression for that point in the bottom of the landscape. So the best fit through the data. Um, but there are reasons that you wouldn't want to do this sometimes. So for example, taking the inverse can be pretty intense. Um, so another method to find, to do this, the same thing, gradient descent, is again thinking about it. So I like the visual analogies because I think that's the best way to, the easiest way for me to approach these things. So I th always think about gradient descent is just, again, this landscape and you're dropping a ball on it and trying to get the ball to the bottom of the hill. So this is a, it's a numerical technique, so it's iterative. Um, and so it, it really what you're doing is you're taking a guess, you're guessing what's the bottom, you're putting your little ball right there, and then you're telling it to roll downhill. So you're gonna say the next step is where the, the ball was, minus some step size lambda times the gradient at that point. And so I guess the, the, the thing I wanted to say, because it, it makes some cool graphs, but also it's a, it's a good point, is that it really a lot depends on the step size that you have. Um, so this is, lambda is way too big. And so you're going downhill, but you're going way too far downhill. This is, lambda is too small. So it's taking you a million steps to get to the, to close to the bottom. Um, and this is, lambda is just right. And so really, so this is going back, let's see. This was, yeah, right, so this was all how to estimate those parameters, how to get that line through the data. Um, and so the next thing, Nathan is gonna talk about, a bit more about um, that kind of thing. Uh, he's gonna talk about classification now.